um, we have uh, studied the image. We bring the image from your family, because if you don't know about that, or if you don't have curiosity about that, you're pretty much a zombie. Right? <laughs> so I've asked you to bring the images from your grandparents forward, if that can be done. And uh, I'm a big theory head. I love theory, but I also love the practice of theory. So um, in addition to this, I've asked the students, audience, to go to a wonderful site called pivot.cost.com. It's $30 billion out there of public money to um, work on research, creative projects, um, small business incubation. It's just a, a great site of, uh, interactive site of uh, public information on grants and funding and so forth. So if you weren't jazzed up about that, <laughs> then you are a zombie, because I, I totally get jazzed up every time I go to this site. But Joseph did some hunting and gathering in this site, um, specifically for what? Uh, culture, immigration, uh, how that affects uh, each other through time of, of a few decades. Right. And, uh, and using film as kind of a medium of uh, deliverable, right? Yes, and also uh, to show... Um, particularly the Indian immigrants from uh, India to the United States, and how, um, for example, in one specific instance, how, for example, the marriage is evolving, the nature of marriage is evolving. Ooh, the and nature, the, the, yeah, because, the traditional... Yeah, traditionally it was actually very different from Western culture, for example. Right. I mean, and it is actually evolving, and like it's evolving not only in the United States, but also in India because of Real. Uh, cultural interaction. So wow. this is actually something that's very interesting to me because it, it impacts my life directly, you know, like how I live my life is based a lot on things Are like that. Are you married? No, I'm not. Um, no, this is, a, this is incredible. And um, two or three things I've asked the students of this is to, to um, use your project as kind of like a beta test. Prepare this film, however, to make a skeletal version of the two, two um, approach a social contradiction that you might feel is publicly interesting, at least. And three, this whatever you approach when you're approaching public money, it has to be both um, rigorous and classical in addition to being innovative. So that's, that's, that's uh, yeah, we're, it, it's, in some ways we're artists, documentarians, doing science, but it's not really a science, so we're asking for public money. Ultimately, th these works, these filmic works, will be given over back to the public because they're, they're paying for it through these grants. They should so be beneficiary. Yeah, beneficiary. This is incredible. Sounds like a really in-depth. Let's talk about the, the project first, Joseph. This, this is amazing because we have this um, collision of cultures, I think, I'm just paraphrasing what the, you know, I, I imagine my great-great-grandparents had kind of somewhat arranged marriages. I, I imagine that might have been true. Long this is a very yeah. agrarian type thing to yeah. have done. And then during the industrial era, and certainly in European colonial era, the notion, if you look at the history books, the notion of romance and romantic love as taken from the French troubadour tradition, Eleanor of Aquitaine, and placed wholesale across European societies, was an engine of modern industrialist, uh, industrial capitalism. How has this notion, let's not even call it Western notion, how has a new Indian notion of romantic love changed the subcontinent and Indians in America? I think uh, people have learned to be more accepting of different perspectives and not to like, I would say like not to stigmatize it and like put it down. Instead, be, Meaning the arranged marriages or the romantic love They model. look bad upon something that's foreign, so they would, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> but right. this, is, this is the older culture, you know, so Were they your actually... Parents, did your parents have an arranged marriage? My parents did. I mean, they knew each other before they got married, but it was an arranged marriage. How many else had a parents for arranged marriage? No one? All romantically. Well, They're in the same city. The family knew the thing and said, why don't you? <laughs> Somewhat like that. 
But but your parents were very formally arranged, right? Um, they were formally arranged, but they saw each other a few times before they got married. So they knew each other, talked to each other. That's pretty much it. So it's not like, oh, we're, we mailed away for your husband here. No, no, he's, it wasn't he's like arriving that. on Tuesday. No, or no, something. no, they saw each other and talked to each other before. <laughs> what do you? Um, this is extremely interesting because as we leave in America, the post industrial I've, I'm wedded to this concept that industrial capitalism needed romantic love to set up this this incubation of desire, and we of course know that desires come and go. That this was an input, not necessarily European, but it was a function of modern capitalism to, and you see it in, you hear it in every, not just country western song, every song is kind of about neurotic love or hearts broken or something like this. How, what, or, uh, Joseph, what a couple bullet points about this notion of family love um, in India and how it's transformed there and here. I would say, like, uh, in India, it's like a very old, very um, ancient kind of tradition. But here, it's more modern. It's uh, not just here, but also in Europe and, like, parts of Asia also and, like, Australia, different parts of the world. Does the typical I Indian feel, because I, I understand you're actually Catholic, too. Yeah. Right. Does, but, but your parents grew up in India. Yeah. Does the typical Indian feel the 5,000-year history of India? No. <laughs> you can't palpably but, feel that. No, you can't, but it's there. It's behind the scenes. It's, so it's behind it's everything It's always working. Yeah, but, it, but you, don't, you don't know about it until you actually go somewhere else and see it's different. Are the young taught history pretty well, do you think? They're taught history formally, but uh, culturally also there's a lot of history taught. I only lived there like, from when I was like 11 to 12, so I only know a little bit about it. Right. Uh, I was only taught for a year and a half. But uh, yeah, so there's a lot of teaching, but it's not taught as... Uh, kind of formal, this is your history, this is your culture, this is what you're expected to do. It's more like, well, this is all that is, you know? And then, and when new, new mores, new ways of doing things arrive at a culture, they, they either, a couple of different choices, reject it, absorb it, um, or reject their old system and totally in place the new system. I think all three happen, which is like, it happens in phases, but it's like slowly transitioning in one way or the other. Right. But the thing is like, uh, usually when you see an old culture, it actually intrinsically has a tendency to reject everything because it had all this culture yeah. for so long. But then it's later on- It's an interruption of yeah, identity. Yes, but it takes a new generation and generations after that to realize, you know what? The other thing may be better than you think. You know, everyone else went through this evolution, so to speak, and maybe it's your turn to go through the same thing. Is this a particular dynamic that is important for the modern India, the powerhouse, the economic powerhouse, the, the, the uh, body of educated individuals who are taking their place on the world economic and cultural stage? I think it is, because the thing is, like, uh, the ideas of older tradition necessarily will not stand the modern developments. I mean, they need to change for a modern society to take hold right. strongly. And um, a lot of the young people, they're not thinking of it consciously necessarily, but they know that to live their lives well, they have to do things a little differently than, let's say, the grandparents. Right. Sort of mash it up or not totally reject the, the traditional ways. Has... Um, has the world really changed that much, David? Yeah. Were, were, were your parents from China? or are yeah. they? They're so China. they're from China. Do they get frustrated at you and your tastes yeah. and desires and so forth? Yeah, because, uh, well, but nowadays people, like, they always want to go out, you know, hang out with friends and stuff. But Instead um, of the family. Yeah. So then when I'm out, my parents always nag me, you know, you got to come home quick, be home. Yeah, like at a certain time, can't go out as much, but... Do they ever say, stop acting so American? No. <laughs> no. Your parents? Um, well, From Uzbekistan? My dad always, like, compared, like, how, right now, like, we were eating dinner yesterday, and he's like, oh, I can't bring my eye touch, and my dad is like, oh, my God, you have my phone, you have a laptop, you have an iPad, like, I'm going to worry about where your eye touch is, and then he's like... Oh, when I was young, you know, I had I a didn't goat. Have any of this. <laughs> and, or he'd like compare how all of us, all of my sisters and I, have like separate rooms, or like we share one room. 
he was like, oh, well, me and my like five other brothers used to share one room and this and that. So, he was, like, so he's giving you the bad old days version exactly. of character building. Okay. We do have kind of explain to him that he lived in a different time and we're living in a different time. And the reason that they decided to move from Uzbekistan was for, for their children to have a better, I don't know, living than they had. So, but I feel like he does feel that his life is a lot more simpler than ours is right now because, again, like I can relate to him saying, oh, whenever I go out every Saturday night, oh, why don't you stay home with the family instead of this and that? So, like, there is that. Why don't you give us your quality time? Exactly. And, and, exactly. and you might sit there and go, like, well, here I am. <laughs> or do you do that with your parents? Like, here I am, Mom and Pa. What, what kind of quality do you want? Jump right in. Similar? No, my parents are actually different. They're like, you can do whatever you want. You make your own choices. So if you regret it, it's your fault. If you end up in a ditch, it's yeah. your fault. It's kind of the, the North American cowboy ethos, right? So you, so typically a young, not you guys, Typically, a young person will experiment with different things, drugs, alcohol, whatever, end up in a ditch and go like, that wasn't so fun. I guess I'll cross that off my list, right? Is that a part of this capacity to experience things? Is that important? It's pretty important. To experience it at least once. Yeah. And go like, oh, that's what they were all talking about. That hangover really killed me the next day, right? Um, or, or is there something you want to take... Jonathan, piecemeal from your parents' ethos from the old country? Not really. I'd rather see things for myself. Because when they say something, it's just in words. When I do it, it's like personal experience and personal feelings that gets involved. The here and the now, the immediacy. Yeah. Because you're, you're American, right? You don't want to say, well, China's a f another 5,000-year-old country. Let's, wh wh who am I to... Pay them deference, you know, in my uh, my five thousand year old history. I got a two hundred fifty year old history here, two hundred forty year old history here. So there's there's little conflict, but you talk it out, right? Yeah. Very interesting, Joseph. How I like when he theory hits the street. I love this theory of cultural difference. This idea of kind of like the 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 cut and paste society that new India, new Indian Americans new American-Americans are getting using the media, and we'll study McLuhan where he said the medium is the message. There's, there's no other content but the media that we're using, the iPods, as opposed to sitting around and talking to your parents, is saying, well, what are we talking about? Well, I can get more out of you guys on Facebook than I can out of sitting here. Of course, I'm being facetious, but McLuhan was saying it's all like, that's all like math. He borrowed from Claude Shannon and said, that's, that's just information. Let's not evaluate information. It, are, we, are you in a new machine as opposed to your parents? I think all the time life is like an evolving concept. It's not a fixed concept. So um, kind of like it's like a living universe, like as history changes, it's a living universe. So yeah, everyone it's, is in different machines. It's, it's an organism. But right. it's actually transformative and it's evolving and it's uh, changing. But at the same time, it's kind of the same machine because we operate under the same laws as we did 10,000 or 100,000 years. But there are things that are changing about it. Okay, let me, let me pose a real direct moral question to all of you. Up until you're 35, cool job or cool relationship? What goes first? Cool job. Cool job goes first? Yeah. David didn't say that. <laughs> Up to 35. No kids. You could, your first job could be in Seattle. It could be in Atlanta. If suddenly you get the, the paper. It's like, oh, you got a $20,000 raise and whatever. And your girlfriend says, oh, we can have a relationship on Skype. Would you do it? Take yeah. the job? Because part of this ethos I'm getting at here, diversity means mobility too, right? Yeah. It means we're all, in a sense, we're all soldiers, right? Jennifer, you said keep the relationship. <laughs> keep the job. <laughs> keep the job, right? Uh, no. It's more complicated than that. If you're over 35. If I'm 35. 
if you're like 35. In my culture, like, girls are supposed to get married by 25, the latest. Are you going to do that? Well, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, that, that's a lot. Like, since I want to go to medical school, that's always been brought up in my situation. Oh, how are you going to go to medical school far away if you meet someone and you get married? Um, they bring this up? Yes, it is brought up. Not by, by parents, but by other, like, people within the... Uzbeki community. Within the Baharian community. Baharian community. Yeah, and you go like, what? Exactly. <laughs> I'm in America now. <laughs> so that's like one of the biggest dilemmas. For I feel for a lot of uh, females within my community to go higher than... Um, Is there... Okay, so here's an American mechanism. I We're talking about, um, Andrew, uh, 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 how... Joseph is approaching his grant. What is the pedagogy he's approaching? What are the inherent social collisions, contradictions within it? Uh, two, how theory hits a street, how simple moral decisions like what's a girl to do? You know, it's like get the cool job or the cool relationship. Oops, <laughs> I'll throw out one or the other. And that these, what we assume to be these very entrenched 5,000-year-old cultures are changing rapidly also, right? Yes, that's okay. um, What This is, I have to say, this is a very fresh film. I think this is a very cool project. The, the way you've discussed it, the, 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 the dynamics are very well parsed out. Um, what, um, what is kind of... Because you don't want you don't want to have a society that's completely you do you see a lot of alienation in American society, Joseph. There's some, but I don't think it's that significant. I mean, you have to expect some difference when you are part of an immigrant community, like changing culture, changing society, and living in a new place. But it isn't something that should be unforeseen. You should expect it. I mean, do you see a lot of alienation in people outside of your ethnic group? In between each other? No, no. I, for example, alienation, I mean, whatever you studied in Psych 101, right? Despair, loneliness to the point of suicide. Someone said that suicide had gone up in the past five years or ten years, and it was mostly in the demographic of middle-aged white guys. So this is like what their statistics are there. What, what, is, um, what is group? What is alienation? How do we, how do we, when we talked about like this Oedipal trajectory of the cowboy film and, and how one must work out one's own destiny, is this the way of the world? I think it's global, it's not just, you know. So I've traveled and lived a lot of places when anyone shook their finger at me and said, it's so American, don't Americanize us. I said, my, yeah, my, my country doesn't <laughs> corner that market, dude. It's like, it's yours. You know, in Korea, it's, it's your modernization. It's not mine. So you can't blame my country for, for it. Everyone chooses their life and their destiny, so... Right. Um, next step. I've asked each one of you to ask for 5,000 films. A uh, couple other very unique bullet points of why this film would be... What, what would your approach be in filming in India and the United States or not? I would basically look for like a crucible of all these things that I've talked about, which is... Uh, like a wedding that takes place in India and right. a wedding that takes place in the United States. I would just compare the ah, two. Ah, go and right to weddings. That's yeah, interesting. I mean, and interview people right there. So studio audience, I've asked each of my students to look on costs, 5G, that's offset with a month's worth of wage. I like uh, Joseph approach, no, no travel funds. You just get the camera, go right to the wedding, perhaps look for grants to pay you in labor. Do it up there. We're approaching 20 minutes. This is very stimulating. Let's thank Joseph and see you on YouTube.